In 2009, Bitcoin had no value. No one cared about it. It was fragile. A single person or entity. The hash rate would double or triple in a day. When they went on vacation, stopped mining, it would drop dramatically. See how fragile that is. And look at it today. I was in Mongolia not too long ago. Camel herder had it. Think about that. You go to Dubai, you have a king say, we need to make some regulation about that. You have a nation state adopt it. That's incredible. A religion, actually to the Central African Republic. This guy knows. 44 central banks were invited to El Salvador to have that conversation. And that's just the beginning. 10 years ago, we were talking about, God, how do we get PayPal to talk about us? Man, it would be so great if, like, Larry Page said something. Boy, it'd be really cool if Bill Gates mentioned something. Well, lo and behold, everybody loves Bitcoin and no one likes Bill Gates. I think we won. Ahead of Consensus 2022, Charles Hoskinson, the founder of the Cardano blockchain, recently hosted around 2,000 Cardano and crypto lovers in Austin, Texas. The American entrepreneur, who is also the founder of the blockchain engineering company Input and Output, spoke enthusiastically about the blockchain, highlighting several ways in which we can use the distributed ledger technology to better our communities. Hoskinson stated that he is wowed by how far the cryptocurrency community has grown within the past decade. He explained that at his first Bitcoin gathering, only three people attended and one guy had to go to the bathroom. Now, the proud crypto advocate has almost 2,000 people attending a small community event in Texas. The Cardano founder also talked about the rapidly crumbling economies of the world and how the blockchain provides a completely new system that prioritizes the needs of all regardless of how affluential or wealthy they are. If you are ready for some ray of sunshine amid the ongoing crypto crash and the overall bear market, then you need to watch this video to the end. Also, ensure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share your comments and observations below. Thanks, and enjoy the video. And you know, Matthias mentioned something, Bencourt, the new open source director at the Cardano Foundation, that I thought was pretty cool and pretty special. More than 50% of all the changes in the Vossel hard fork are from SIPs. 50%. Half of all the changes, more than half, are from you, the community. Things that were written, discussed, proposed, back and forth. Where did we get business and technical requirements for things like reference inputs? Well, the Plutus team thought about it, but where'd they get the inspiration? Where'd they have the discussion? From the Cardano DeFi Alliance, from DAP developers, from the Ergo community, from people all about industry. That's how it should work, right? That's decentralization. I just did an interview with Ledger. Ada's coming to Ledger Live. Some people like that. And while talking to them, they said, you know, it was really weird working with Cardano. I say, how's that? Why is that? And they said, well, we didn't talk to a company. We did the whole thing through Catalyst. And it was weird because there was no CEO or business person. It was the community. We were directly engaging with them and they were asking questions. We didn't know who was in charge or which things to prioritize. I said, you mean like Bitcoin? They're like, yeah, kind of like that. It's like, yeah, that's, that's decentralization. That's how it's supposed to be. Go figure. How messed up is it in 2022 that you have to explain to a blockchain company how decentralization works? That's the sad state of affairs in this industry. That's another reason why we came here to consensus. We came here to remind people that principles matter. We came here to remind people that decentralization matters. We came here to remind people that it's not about when moon, and yields and all these other things. It's about changing the damn world. And how do you do it? You do it with a community. You don't do it with leaders. You don't do it with pyramids. It's a big circle. You do it with all of us together, working together. And each and every person, somehow, some way, with your own wants, needs, desires, opinions, you find a way to converge and get it done because we need to get it done. This world is falling apart. $32 trillion in debt. Every institution lacks honesty. No one believes anything anymore. No one trusts anybody anymore. Every time someone says something, there's always some cynical asshole who says, ah, that can't possibly be true. That's the world we live in today. Cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology at their core are about hope. At their core, they're about saying that we actually have agency as people. 
We do not need leaders. We do not need great people. Instead, we can just work together, voluntary, come together and change things together. It can be a new voting system, a new supply chain system. It can be clean drinking water. By the way, there are stake pools doing that very thing in Africa today, right now. It could be about feeding people in your local community. By the way, there are people in Cardano doing that today in Buenos Aires and other places right now. It's not hypothetical, it exists, it's here. These people exist. It can be whatever your local problem is, these are tools. They belong to no one and they're for everyone. That's the power and why so many people show up when it's 100 degrees outside. It's why so many people come to Austin, Texas to remind the cryptocurrency space that this is what really matters, what open for business really means. It's a privilege watching it. It's easy to lose hope. You ever been on Twitter? You ever been on Reddit? You ever read some books? Yeah. It's easy to be cynical, it's easy to get, levy criticism. It's easy to be a pathological complainer. Every day tell people what they're not, what they can't do, what you're allowed to do. It's a hell of a lot harder to say, I've had enough, I'm just gonna do it differently and fuck it, let's see what happens. That's where our industry came from. In 2009, Bitcoin had no value. No one cared about it. It was fragile. A single person or entity. The hash rate would double or triple in a day. When they went on vacation, stopped mining, it would drop dramatically. See how fragile that is. And look at it today. I was in Mongolia not too long ago. Camel herder had it. Think about that. You go to Dubai, you have a king say, we need to make some regulation about that. You have a nation state adopt it. That's incredible. A religion, actually to the Central African Republic. This guy knows. 44 central banks were invited to El Salvador to have that conversation. And that's just the beginning. 10 years ago, we were talking about, God, how do we get PayPal to talk about us? Man, it would be so great if like Larry Page said something. Boy, it'd be really cool if Bill Gates mentioned something. Well, lo and behold, everybody loves Bitcoin and no one likes Bill Gates. I think we won. Hoskinson spoke further about the Cardano blockchain platform, hailing it as Bitcoin's spiritual successor. While he applauded the leading blockchain network, Hoskinson believes there are some lapses that are not available on the Cardano network, making it better and more powerful. And Cardano in many ways is a spiritual successor. You see, great innovations always stand on the shoulders of giants. A lot of things were beautiful and right about Bitcoin. There were a lot of incredible ideas. The accounting model, UTXO, it's good, but it can be better. So extended UTXO. There's a lot of good principles on how to build things with good security. So the GKL model explained that in a very precise technical way, which gave guidance on how to build a great consensus algorithm, or a Boris. Now we're here. And in many ways, I think Cardano is a spiritual successor to the things that Bitcoin got started. It has many of the same principles of it's leaderless and no one's in charge and it gets ever more decentralized and it's growing like a weed. However, it's useful. You can do more with it than just buy, hold, store, and send. Five million assets you created. Some here, you can talk to the people doing it. Whole worlds and metaverses are being created. ISPs on a blockchain. Anybody see the dish deal? Think about that, 22 million people, and that's small from where we're going. A nation state has entrusted this ecosystem to the credentials of its youth, the K through 12. Think about that. And that's just the beginning. The real value comes from you. Every person in this audience, you're the ones who on this technology will build the next Microsofts and Googles and Apples. The difference is instead of don't be evil, it'll be can't be evil. They'll be fair. We hear a lot of political words like equity, fairness, equality. Oh, we need everyone to be equal, these things. Have we ever constructed in history a social system where that's the case, where the billionaires play by the same rules as the poorest amongst us? No, 
not until we created cryptocurrencies. This is the first time ever where you, as the users, have the same rights and controls and access as the creators of the system. Forever! Hoskinson has been hailed as one of the foremost advocates of the cryptocurrency industry. He has love for his slow and steady approach, regardless of how long it takes to get it right. The team recently postponed the much-awaited Vassal hard fork. In a broadcast that we brought to you on this channel, Hoskinson stated that the delay would give developers more time to build on the network before the upgrade. The hard fork has now been rescheduled to the last week of July. The network is also easily one of the more promising projects in an industry with tens of thousands of projects, networks, and communities. According to data from cryptocurrency analytics firm Stantiment, Cardano's development activity has surpassed that of other major cryptocurrencies in the past month. It is currently the eighth largest cryptocurrency by market cap, with a market cap of $15 billion and a 24-hour trading volume of $204 million. What do you think about Charles Hoskinson's address at the Austin event? Please share your comments and observations with us by dropping them in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Everything helps with the YouTube algorithm, so we can keep bringing you these videos. Thanks and enjoy the video.